Good evening and thank you for joining us. We're gonna to call to order the regular meeting for the Akron Public Schools Board of Education for Monday, August 10th, 2020. Roll call, please. Dr. Akbar. Here. Mr. Alexander. Present. Ms. Autry. Present. Mr. Bravo. Here. Dr. Hall. Aye. Mrs. Mansfield. Here. Mrs. McKittrick. Here. Thank you. And if everyone could uh, mute and we will uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. We're going to open it up at this time for community and school reflections. I will keep an eye on the chat as well as your hands if I can. So please let me know if you'd like to jump in and share for community and school reflections. And if we have, oh, Ms. Autry. Hi, I know we are gonna be addressing it later on the agenda, but I just wanted to take a moment just to acknowledge and thank uh, the many, many, many uh, folks who reached out to me, um, students, parents, families, coaches, community members, et cetera, just in regards uh, to the sports and extracurriculars. Um, I know everyone's really passionate about it. And I just wanted to uh, thank those folks and, and let them know that they've been heard. And I just wanted to acknowledge them and thank them. Thank you, Ms. Autry. Ms. Mansfield? Actually, been a busy couple of APS weeks, which is lovely. Um, first, want to thank um, the Think Tank and Shark Tank Solutions. Dr. Akbar and I both got to attend part of that, and they presented problems and gave creative research solutions. There are students from all over the district. Also, the All Akron Student Engineering Program. We um, were invited to their closing ceremonies. Um, that's part of the outreach with the city of Akron for their waterways renewed and in their Akron service department. The students worked with 22 local companies to provide, um, they were provided with paid internships in many cases, and they were given the three E's of exposure to STEM careers, experience and employment. And so as usual, Dr. Halasa goes above and beyond. I call her a force of nature and I'm not kidding. Um, she was responsible and a participant uh, guiding force for both of those programs. And also want to thank the director um, for the second program, the engineering program, that's Dr. Jonathan Simmons for their hard work and acknowledgement. Uh, the JCC held a fantastic conversation on racial justice. And on Saturday, I got the opportunity to go over to North High School where first serve out of Hudson, um, I believe it's the Congregational Church, I should have written that part down, um, has been volunteering all summer. I posted some great pictures, including one of our own Bruce Alexander. They are, we're redoing the Sports Hall of Fame hallway at North. Um, got to get nice and painted and dirty, helping out in the heat. And um, they were fantastic folks and uh, huge thanks to them. There's still opportunities to sign up if any students or people need service hours, that's still available. And I would echo what Diana said, um, the calls and passionate emails and um, messages um, have, have really touched my heart and just made it even more clear if it wasn't already how important school and the extracurriculars such as sports are to our community, not just our students and family, but to all of us. So thanks for the time, Mr. President. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. I'm a victim of technology. Dr. Akbar and then Dr. Hall, I think I saw you in that order, my apologies. All right, so uh, I, I want to do the same, uh, just echo both Lisa and uh, Diana's uh, comments about um, all of the different people who have reached out about sports um, and sharing their um, concerns, passions, and desires, and 
Um, I'll share more of my thoughts on that um, later, but I, I just want to say that, that some of the emails did definitely give me some things to think about um, and uh, was a little bit of reminiscent as I was, a, you know, I played sports in, in high school as well. Um, so I, I kind of went down memory lane reading some of the uh, emails. Um, and then next, I, I also attended the Shark Tank Think Tank event. And, um, you know, I say this all the time, but it, it, it is so true that our students, uh, when we talk about coming up with innovative solutions for our the next century's problems, our students definitely have them. Uh, their presentations um, in many in many cases were better than some uh, professional presentations I've seen, and that is no lie. Uh, <laughs> so kudos to them. Uh, I, I think I saw all but the last group go. I had to leave right at the end, uh, so <clears throat> apologize for that, but they, they were really amazing. Um, the last thing I'll say is uh, there's a group of individuals who are really interested in um, expanding uh, broadband access uh, across the city. So I met with them um, and had a conversation about uh, the impact that that would have, well, not only on our students, but also uh, our parents and uh, them being a able to work from home and, and a lot of things that happens now, for example, at something as simple as applying for a job, it all happens online now. And so um, really looking at how do we as a community um, expand broadband access across uh, our city. So that was a really good uh, discussion and I'm looking forward to uh, many more of those. And that's all I have today. Thank you. Here I am, I'm doing it again. I'm saying your name and I'm saying congratulations and we're so glad you were able to join us this evening. Uh, congratulations yeah. on the newest addition to your family. Uh, and please go ahead. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. President, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I was gonna say, I was gonna pause in advance. Um, you know, if you hear a screaming baby in the background at um, during portions of tonight's meeting, um, that just means that I have a lot of making up to do when the meeting's done tonight. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, we have, we do, we do have an, a new daughter. And so we are, we are very blessed and thankful. Mommy and baby are, are very healthy. So, so thank you. So, so thank you for that, Mr. President. Um, so I, I think it's important as well. Um, again, we'll echo the comments of Dr. Akbar and, uh, Ms. Autry, Ms. Mansfield, and others around this, um, uh, as it relates to the, the, you know, the multitude of, of really thoughtful emails uh, we've gotten, um, you know, as relates to uh, many things, but but most recently, um, this, you know, the sporting environment, and it's it's very it's very clear, I think, to all of us at this point uh, how important this topic is, and you know, I think that you know, as we sort of, you know, sort of move this meeting along, and you know, hopefully, we'll be able to engage in some sort of thoughtful sort of dialogue that kind of demonstrates to the community the amount of time and thought that each of us as an, as individuals have put in. Um, to thinking about and taking into account their feedback, um, you know, in this process. And so, so I, I just too want to echo those comments and say, I just, I really appre appreciate the time. And, you know, so, several of these emails were very lengthy emails. Um, and so, again, I want to thank you for the time that you took to, to draft those emails in your free time on Saturdays and Sundays and things like that. So uh, we're just very appreciative of that. And just know that, that we're all doing our best to, to, you know, to take that, 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 that feedback into account. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's where that's where I want to leave it. And again, just want to apologize uh, to everybody who may be tuning in if you hear a crying baby in the background. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll see the rest of my time back to you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, and I think that would be okay. We would we would welcome that, and she's certainly welcome to join our meeting if she'd like. So, um, anyone else would like to share community or school reflections? All right, hearing none, um, I also just want to uh, repeat the same thing. So many phone calls and emails and social media reach outs and, and uh, talking to people out in the community. Uh, we appreciate all of the feedback and I, I hope you know that we're, as you'll see later too, we're taking this discussion and approaching it as thoughtfully and as deliberately as we approached our discussion on restarting school. 
Um, we hear you, uh, we hear all of you, and we know that um, it's difficult, right? Because we've said before, it's hard to come up with a plan that's gonna please 100% of the people, 100% of the time. We're certainly gonna do our best though to be thoughtful and deliberate about how we talk about it um, and, and whatever decision, final decision uh, is made. Um, so thank you for that. And because I only have a very short report because I know we wanna get to some discussions, I'm just gonna mention a couple of other things and this will serve as my president's report as well. All of you should have received the evaluation information. Um, so if you could please complete that, we're looking to try and get that turned in uh, to the folks that I, I sent out to you um, by next Monday. So if you could take a look at those and complete those, that would be great. I'll follow up with you next Monday and then we'll be scheduling evaluation conferences for the superintendent and treasurer. Our, uh, you should have also received some board preliminary board retreat information. Uh, Dr. Akbar and I are meeting tomorrow to try and finalize the agenda. We'll get that out to you um, as soon as we do have a finalized agenda. Um, and then the last thing that I want to mention uh, is that uh, just to recognize uh, Mr. Pendleton, who was recently recognized by the Association of School Business Officials International. Uh, he received the uh, prestigious 2020 Pinnacle of Achievement Award. And I'm gonna read this part so that I don't mess it up, but the Pinnacle Awards recognize school business officials' innovations and outstanding practices that result in significant contributions to their district and the profession of school business management. And so we wanna congratulate uh, Mr. Pendleton for that outstanding award. Uh, it's amazing when you look around, not just the state, but around the country. And even in this case, um, this school business officials international uh, that you know our superintendent, assistant superintendent, our treasurer, and, and many of our senior staff continue to be recognized for their outstanding achievements locally, statewide, nationally, and even abroad. So congratulations, Mr. Pendleton, well-deserved. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure we're all clapping in <laughs> some way. So. Thank you. Congratulations. I know, I need some canned uh, clapter, clapping and some canned laughter or something so that I can play those at the appropriate time. All right, we do have um, a request to address the board. And I did look a second ago I'm going to double check and make sure the councilman is with us, but I do not see him. Do we, can someone confirm if he is there? Mr. President, I do not see him. Sean Smellick? No, I don't see his name. Councilman, if you're there, if you could unmute yourself and let us know. Well, <clears throat> we will see if he joins us at a later time during this meeting. This is a reschedule from the last meeting. We did confirm that he would be on, but I don't see him. So if he joins us, we'll maybe carve out just a minute to allow him to address the board um, during this meeting in case there were technical difficulties. So with that, we'll move on to the approval of the regular meeting minutes for July 27th, 2020. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. McKittrick and a second by Ms. Autry. Any comments, question, or discussion on the meeting minutes? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent's recommendations, personnel. You're muted, Mr. Superintendent. I was imitating you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to do well, that. <laughs> Mr. President, I wish to recommend approval of the personnel recommendations presented in categories five through 16. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Dr. Akbar, a second by Mr. Alexander. Any comments, question, or discussion on the personnel recommendations? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Dr. Akbar? 
Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Thank you. Next, Mr. President, I wish to recommend approval of the resolutions and motions presented in category 21. And I would also like to point out um, the $23,000 grant from the Catherine and Edward A. Lozick Foundation is supporting our advanced manufacturing lab at uh, Kimmore Garfield High School. Also, a $30,000 uh, grant from Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company uh, to support uh, supplies and materials, including hot spots that we would need um, for the start of school. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone that contributed. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda items? So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. McKittrick and a second by Ms. Mansfield. Are there any comments, questions, or discussion? Ms. Mansfield? Thank you. Uh, the superintendent stole two of those. I was going to mention those as well. So good, good on you for being on top of that. Those are wonderful donations. It's great to see our community involved. Also wanted to uh, say Alaire Homes for their donation um, over at the baseball fields at Firestone. They will be installing those on Saturday. Unfortunately, we'll be in the middle of a board retreat at that point, so we won't be able to stop by and say thank you, but um, thanks here as well. So many fantastic donations. Also wanna mention um, our partnership with the ADM board and Jerry Craig and thank them for their continued support for the mental health of our students. And I'm really excited to see what the expansion of the advanced quantitative reasoning course, which just saying that makes me makes my head hurt. Um, that just sounds amazing. But if there's anyone who could put together a fantastic program, it's Jenny Walls. And kudos to her for her work with the Ohio Department of Education to create that course and, um, and for her continued brilliance as a teacher. Thank you so much, Ms. Mansfield. Any other comments, questions, or discussion on the consent agenda, Ms. Autry? Yeah, I just want to piggyback on uh, what Mrs. Mans Mansfield uh, mentioned regarding the advanced quantitative reasoning course. Um, and for those that are listening who are just itching to have an advanced math course, uh, what we're going to be voting on is that it's going to be expanded to all schools now, not just Firestone. So. I just wanted to uh, mention that. So anyone still working on their schedules, want to uh, take advanced math, it'll be available district-wide now. Fantastic. And who doesn't want advanced math, right? Anyone else with comments, questions, or discussion? Paul, please. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And after we do business affairs, we did have two people join us. So after business affairs, if we could confirm while we're doing that, if uh, one of them is the councilman, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to recommend approval of business affairs recommendations presented in category 23. Thank you. So yeah. moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. McKittrick, as well as Mr. Alexander. Any comments, questions, or discussion on the business affairs agenda items? Yeah, Mr. President, I actually have a couple of questions Go on ahead, this Dr. item. Uh, with respect to items 2315 and 2316, um, I just want to make sure I, I have a, a good understanding um, on sort of the process that we follow um, when we're sort of determining, <clears throat> you know, the best professional development for 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 our, our, our schools. So, and 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 how, and how do we arrive at that? Um, so, for example. I'll use the 20, uh, 2316 with Robinson. So 
what is that process like? So do we actually engage the staff at Robinson, uh, Robinson CLC? Is, is there sort of, uh, is there a, a process where we solicit to the feedback of the teachers at the building? Sure. I'll, sort of, yeah. Yeah, I'll ask Mr. Harrington to chime in on that one. Yes, uh, good afternoon, President Bravo board members. So essentially uh, what happens in relation to this development, uh, this is all geared around our school quality improvement grant. That grant money came from the Ohio Department of Education, specifically for leadership, leadership for administrators, teachers, and then also students. With regards to um, the input from the staff, before anything is sent to the board for approval, the building level team, uh, teacher-based teams have conversation about why this connects to their 90-day plan or their school improvement plan. From there, they create what is called a seven block, which is submitted to Mr. Strategic's office to make sure that there's alignment with our curriculum and our district focus. If it's approved there, it then moves to uh, Dr. McWilliam Woods for approval, Mrs. Otley Kelly if it's elementary, Mr. Black if it's secondary, and then the funding side of it if it's coming from my department, then the approval there as well. So there is input uh, at the building level before it moves all the way to the board, just to make sure that there's alignment with regards to their improvement plan and the things that they've outlined in that 90 day plan. So yes, yeah, so, so Mr. Arrington, appreciate that. So so for example, it, you know, um, you know, it, you know it, it, who at the building level do we are we getting feedback from? Is it the principal? Is there there is there a committee of te teachers that that building that kind of are there? Um, for, so for example, um, you know, suggest the Office of School Improvement to Robinson, and we ask their, what their thoughts on it are, or do we, or, or or do you sort of partner with Robinson and say, hey, there, you know, we've got this grant money. Um, you know, here are our idea. You know, here are some ideas for professional development. What are your thoughts? I, I, I guess that's that. I guess that's what I'm trying to drill down in is, is really wanting to understand sort of, um, you know, sort of at the building level, who is it that we would typically engage inside the building? I think you've actually answered it in all the the, the varieties you just described. Um, at times, us as the office of school improvement, we provide um, insight onto what professional development opportunities are out there. Um, within the state, and if we learn in COVID, maybe outside of the state. Um, at the building level, you have teacher-based teams of PLTs that have conversations around what they are looking for. You also have the BLT or the building leadership team, and then of course the administrative staff as well. But once again, as, as they identify if it is in alignment with what they're trying to achieve in closing the gaps, they create that seven block to show how it's going to connect and the things that they may need to move on from the Office of Teaching and Learning, the Office of School Improvement, and then the Executive Director as well. So I think it's a multitude of uh, aspects. Um, it could come from us as sharing, but just because we share doesn't mean that they would want that because it may not be in alignment with their plan, but it may be in alignment with somebody else's plan. So I think it just, it just varies on um, what's out there and, and what they find and what we find, and then having those conversations about the alignment aspect of it and if it's a fiscally sound. Level. Great, I appreciate that. And, and again, you know, you know, kind of the theme of, of a lot of my questions, it, it, as, you, as you're probably noticing, is are I'm really trying to just ensure that you know, um, and just encourage you know, um, a high degree of sort of collaborative and you know of collaborative and you know sort of a, a you know very sort of collegial sort of rapport with our teachers in the buildings you know those folks who are actually you know doing doing this work at the ground level and making sure that we've got you know their feedback on what they think is is, is best as well and, and hopefully come into a meeting of the minds with you all uh in, in, in the office of school improvement thank you for that my my second question um was in relation to uh, and i think we talked about this at the last board meeting um, was with, with regard to uh, the cost. And I see that there's language here now that sort of calls out that this is virtual professional development. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. And so I know that we talked about that there was some negotiation that was still going on. Um, so, so, so do these costs reflect um, the, you know, the lower rate, you know, uh, that we talked about last time? So, so, so reflective of the fact that it's not going to be in person and that it's virtual? Yes, in actuality, when we reached back out to Corwin, they were able to share with us that their virtual cost actually was more than the face-to-face -face cost. 
but we still explained to them at this time, you know, being a good partner, we were looking for uh, some assistance or maybe uh, discounts because we have so many buildings participating either in teacher clarity, teacher efficacy, or a variety. Uh, so what they were able to do is give us discounts for each building. Um, and I think that was shared with the board member. If not, I can get that to you. Um, and then that brought the cost down by $29,300. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, well, listen. Thank you for that um, uh, for that for that feedback and, and for that very descriptive and and uh, robust response. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, or discussion on the business affairs agenda items? Hearing and seeing none. Roll call. Miss Autry. Yes. Mr. Bravo. Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Yes. Mansfield? Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And we did get messages um, from Councilman Malik, who said that he was trying to join, but he was unable to. Um, he did want to pass along uh, his uh, thanks and appreciation to the board uh, for their thoughtful consideration of the Dave Marshall Field netting. Um, and that he thinks that the solution put together by our district athletic director, Joe Vassilotti and Todd Fifthwater and others will resolve the safe, safety issue that's been there for a number of years. Um, so he just wanted to pass along uh, those thanks and we appreciate that and we appreciate him for reaching out and we apologize for any technical issues he may have been having joining the meeting we were uh, trying to uh, allow him to actually join this meeting and there may have been some issues so again councilman uh, we appreciate you and we appreciate you thank you so much with that uh superintendent's report a couple of items i'll turn over to staff um on updates regarding our reopen and recovery uh, teams. Um, one is our schedule for um, uh, returning to school, which will be actually under um, unfinished business, but also on the status of um, how the school day uh, will look for our students as we bring them back. And I believe uh, Rachel Tecca is covering that topic. Thank you, Dr. James and our Akron Board of Education members. Um, I've had the privilege of being able to work collaboratively with our teachers and administrators across the district to a clear and stick schedule so that our families and our students are, are confident in the daily schedule of learning for our students. Um, many of the RRAP team members have worked collaboratively over the last two weeks um, to share an elementary version, a middle school version, as well as a high school version. It kind of outlines the instructional day for our students K to 12. Um, so it's been a very collaborative process and we're excited to um, sh uh, start to communicate that out this evening. Thank you. And um, I wasn't sure if Mrs. Jijic had any updates on uh, items that she may be involved in. No, I, I believe Mrs. Tekka handled it all. Thank you. Um, one issue did come up, board members, and that has to do with um, verifying attendance. There was a law that was passed uh, a year and a half ago um, in regards to a student in Cleveland who met an unfortunate end on her way to school. So we've adapted our plan to make sure that attendance is taken both in the morning and in the afternoon, and that for kids who aren't present for their virtual classes, there will be calls made to the home as required by um, Ohio Revised Code in the Department of Education. That's just one of the many things that we have to look at as we continue to put our plans together. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any comments, questions, or discussion for the superintendent? All right, Treasurer's report. Good evening. I'd like to defer my report and partner with the Finance Committee during their presentation. 
Thank you so much. Committee reports, legal contracts, and board policy. Okay, uh, we met uh, last uh, Tuesday and we had uh, a, a good agenda and we uh, did a lot of work, it was good discussion. Uh, we did, a, we had a uh, good amount of questions that were asked and uh, we we had a very good meeting. Uh, basically, and I'm gonna just touch on a couple of things and Dr. Akbar is gonna touch on others. One of the biggest items which uh, we had discussed uh, was Title IX regulations. And this is uh, regulations from a new discrimination on the basis of sex in, in district programs or activities. And this is for staff as well as students. Uh, and we will, we will look at uh, getting training for, for all of them as well, uh, for, for staff uh, as well as some other individuals who will be in part of the various uh, uh, departments. Uh, this is basically a, a geared towards sexual harassment and, and things of that nature so that there's no discrimination against uh, anyone when it comes to uh, uh, harassment. And we also uh, found out and was told that it is, is considered a fair and an unbiased process and it's, it's more transparent than previous. So there'll be more transparency when it comes to to dealing with this this policy and these, these type of uh, uh, issues. Um, there will be, a, a, as I mentioned before, a core group of people who will be getting trained. Uh, there were administrators, there are gonna be human resources, there are gonna be uh, student services, there'll probably be some other staff from various departments. There may be some other people that we bring in possibly from the community as well to get trained in this area so that they understand what's going on uh, and they can be able to uh, understand and be part of the process so it's fair and unbiased as well. And then the, the main thing with this here is this it's a policy that uh, we we were kind of, it was kind of pushed on us to a certain extent uh, really fast that we had to have it done by this week. And therefore, since our board meeting is tonight, we will have to, uh, when we get to this point, uh, waive the three readings. We'll ask to waive the three readings so we can get this passed in order to have it in place uh, by this week, which is when they requested to be in place. Now, uh, it was, I did ask a question in reference to this policy being what they want us to have. Is there a possibility of having some amendments done? Uh, it was said, yes, if we are any areas of this here that we may want to amend, there are some areas that we can amend, but some areas we cannot amend. And so uh, Diane Fido will advise us to possibly, if we need, if we want to make some amendments to this here, that where we, what we can make amendments to and where, and, and we will we will move for that. So this is a, was a very, uh, uh, very good policy, but I think it's something that, you know, I wanted all board members of Dr. Akbar and I wanted all board members to also possibly get a copy of this so you can look at it as well. That way, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask in reference to that. Uh, we also had uh, some Neola updates and we have a new process, uh, which I think is gonna be really nice. And it'll be nice for not just us as a committee, but it'll be also good for the board members. And this is also, uh, it's a list of all the policies who are, who are the staff that are responsible for these policies and maybe the people they have underneath them who will possibly be uh, need to have their input and with these policies. And we'll continue to move forward as we do by bringing this to the policy committee, looking at these things and also making sure that board members are aware of these policies. But we did also request as well, Dr. Akbar and I, that uh, all board members receive a copy of this as well. So everyone can see what the process, new process is, as well as all the policies that we will possibly be looking at and who the administrative uh, individuals are, administrative staff who will be responsible for various policies. Dr. Akbar? Um, yes, so uh, that was, those were the new topics that we discussed. Uh, we did um, have some follow-up conversations on the uh, racial equity policy uh, so that is something that we discussed. Um, Diana Fido uh, prepared for us some example uh, policies uh, that we, uh, you know, sent in last the last meeting, as well as some additional ones that she found. Um, she did notice that there wasn't any uh, racial equity policies in the state of Ohio. So um, us exploring that would make us one of the first. Um, in addition to that, our uh, uh, Bruce, uh, Mr. Alexander and I uh, both felt that two policy, uh, 
two policies stood out that we wanted to try to model, and that was the St. Paul, Minnesota uh, racial equity policy and the Jefferson County, uh, Kentucky um, policy. Um, so we wanted to look at those and blend those. Um, we're basically taking a stab at it, and so we'll have something for our next meeting to a draft. So I'm looking forward to that first draft and um, moving that forward as well. Uh, again, we are looking at the naming policy uh, for facilities and we would like to have that done by uh, September. Um, so we would like that every board member please look at that policy and make any suggestions. To date, we haven't received any new updates um and we we feel like it's still somewhat incomplete so we're waiting to hear back from some administrators as well on that um and then last but not least uh we followed up about uh employee resource groups and we'll be having a report out from carla chapman and or dr erica glover uh, at our next meeting around the survey that they put out to staff um, for ERGs and what their thoughts are on that to guide us as we begin to work on that policy as well. Thank you so much. So I believe at this time you are looking for a motion have, to waive the three reading requirement on policy 2266. Oh, yes, that is correct. Can we pause for just a moment? We lost Dr. Akbar, if we could wait just a moment. Okay. All right. Um, looks like I got booted out somehow. Um, I'm not sure. Did you hear everything I said, or was it like I started talking and then I got kicked? No, we we heard everything. Okay. So that was the end of my report. Thank you. So <laughs> we're all subject to the whims of technology. Um, I had mentioned, I think at this point, that you are then looking for a motion from the board for a waiver of the three reading requirements on policy 2266 uh, regarding non-discrimination on the basis of sex. So we will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion from Ms. Autry and a second from Ms. McKittrick. And are there any comments, questions, or discussion on that item? Hearing and seeing none. Roll call, please. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Thank you. And now we'll entertain a motion on the approval of policy 2266 on non discrimination policy on the basis of sex. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion from Ms. Dr. Akbar and a second from Mr. Alexander. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Finance and capital management. Thank you. I'll go ahead and uh, start off. So this past Friday, the finance uh, committee did meet um, and also invited to that meeting was the uh, reopen and recovery finance and grant committee. Um, so I just wanted to <clears throat> and appreciate them. It's always nice to have uh, that perspective. So, uh, you know, 
our, we reviewed uh, district-wide financial information, um, including just a reminder um, that the district is facing a $14 million deficit. Um, and without a levy uh, this fall, um, we're gonna have to find ways to balance the books uh, with the least amount of impact to the students. So um, there was discussion around that as well as the uh, three uh, different funds that we are currently utilizing to kind of help us through uh, this uh, current situation. And I will defer to Derek who will go into a little bit more detail about those three different funds that we're currently using. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Ms. Autry. Um, yeah, so as many of you that, may, that that are you know listening to this, um, you know, we can get really in the weeds when we're in our finance committee this conversation. So I think part of the goal in these updates uh, is to try to make this as palatable as, as possible to the you know you know to the layperson that may be listening and tuning in. So Ms. Autry's point, um, you know, you know there are you know there are a number of sort of federal dollars, really really federal pots of money, if you will. Um, that have become available to us, um, you know, in this time of COVID, um, you know, so, you know, there, you know, there are ESSER funds, CARES 2.0 funds, CARES Act 3.0 funds. And really, you know, the important takeaways for this is that each of these pots of money, um, you know, has a varying dollar amount. So one pot of money is $7 million. You know, the second is $1.2 million. There's a third pot that's to be determined yet. And each of these pots of money, um, you know, have various restrictions on what you can and can't spend um, money on. And also, and there are also timing requirements. And so, for example, you know, the ESSER funds, um, you know, which we had $10 million to start, seven, 7 million of which now remains, those funds must be spent by September 30th of 2022. Uh, the second pot of money, the CARES 2.0 funds must be spent by December 30th, 2020. Um, you know, there's a third pot where the, those funds must be spent by December 31st, 2020. Um, you know, so uh, and, and so again, you know, one of the things that that we're really working to do is to make sure that the appropriate items being bought or and or rebated, you know, per the appropriate pot of money. Um, and obviously, you know, we want to make sure that we're using all the funds that are available to us, even if that means repurposing. Um, certain items, you know, for certain buckets to make sure that again, you know, we're taking full advantage, you know, of all the federal dollars um, that are being um, that are being allocated to us as well. Um, yeah, I think some other highlights to share would be, uh, as Ms. Autry mentioned, you know, we had the recovery um, and reopening committee folks with us as well, uh, which I which I thought added really kind of uh, really added a, a nice uh, nice flavor, nice variety to to our conversation. So again, when it, when echo Ms. Autry's comments and, and thanking them for joining us for that um, for that meeting. Uh, and again, you know, really so you know, some of the other highlights. The current forecast with the with, with the full committee, um, you know, really, really showing uh, what, what, what we've been talking about in previous board meetings, which is, you know, we you know, we are going to have a, you know, an overall negative cash balance by fiscal year 2023, which starts July 1st uh, of 2022. Um, for those of you keeping track at home, right now we're in fiscal year 2021. So again, we're not fiscal years are not, are not always. So again, we started by first. So for this fiscal year, you know, to sort of address a million dollar deficit, as Ms. Autry mentioned. Um, and so uh, as she also mentioned, you know, we're looking at, at the various account and line items that we can, um, you know, be, be dialing down into to, you know, to, to try to, you know, saves you know some of those additional funds, and so some some examples of that are looking at sort of new buses this year. Or do we or do we forego those purchases and wait till you know uh, the next fiscal year? Um, you know, we're looking at how do we repurpose textbook purchases to support online learning. Um, you know, we look at you know how would we um, sort of reallocate potentially you know the management of certain general service fund uh, items. You know, and so and, and thinking about how that would impact. Um, you know, uh, you know, folks on those teams, um, you know, also too, we talked a lot about, um, you know, the, uh, the reductions that could be made um, or realized um, while the district is, is holding um, virtual learning, you know, so, so, you know, um, so, so there are some savings that could come that, that, that could help us to sort of trim down our budget as well. Um, you know, and so, um, so, so, you know, I think in, in the long run, you know, it was, it was a good meeting. We had an, a number of good questions that were asked um you know and so 
uh, I think Mr. Householder in, uh, in particular, uh, you know, asked a good question about the impact it. Uh, if students were to return to school prior to January, as to recall, you know, uh, what we propose thus, thus far is that we would wait um, nine weeks, or really approximately one grading period uh, before we would um, sort of reassess whether or not students would, would return to school in person. Um, you know, so obviously that's, that, that would be prior to January. So, so he had a good question around, well, what does that look like uh, if we were you know, return prior to January? So uh, and really, you know, the answer that, that we talked about was making sure um, that well, really stating that, that the district could only support, you know, um, you know, the number of students that the infrastructure it would itself support. So so there are a number of sort of variables, you know, whether it's staffing, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, there's some sort of building related issues as, as well. Line items, you know, expenses that we'd have to make sure that we, um, you know, had, you know, had in place to support that as well. Um, after we asked a question. So, for example, you heard me say earlier on, you know, that, you um, that our cash balances get progressively negative as we move, you know, into the next, you know, several fiscal years. And by by fiscal year 2023, which would be starting July 1st, 2022, uh, at that point in time, if, if we're not able to pass a levy, um, you know, at that point in time, we'd be looking at, um, you know, the uh, you know the state entity, uh, the Ohio Department of Education, you know, uh, potentially moving in and having much more of a direct say, where basically their decision making would supersede that of the local community board, um, you know, where they would take a much more ro uh, robust role in determining uh, sort of what where, where our funds are, are allocated, what things are spent, what cuts are are not made. Uh, so clearly, you know, uh, we want to you know, avoid ha avoid coming to that. But it was important that Ms. Autry asked the question, because, again, you know, um, you know, we we, we we want the community you know, to understand that, you know, uh, while we made a decision to now, for very good reasons, um, you know, and we wholeheartedly support those reasons as, as a finance committee. Um, that eventually, though, um, you know, we're 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 going to need to pass a levy, um, or things could get really dire the next year or two um, as it relates to um, our public school system. So, so I, I think that's uh, I think I think that's a fair synopsis uh, of the last meeting, um, and um, and I'll leave it there. So, thank thank you, Ms. Autry. Thank you, Mr. Penalty. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions, uh, or discussion uh, for the finance committee. I know just on uh, my personal note, here's hoping too that with recent changes in the Ohio House, that maybe we can pick up conversations on House Bill 305 again uh, and move forward with the fair school funding plan that might help all districts uh, right now. Any comments, questions, discussion? Okay. Hearing none, instructional policy and student achievement. I don't have anything, Mrs. Mansfield. No yeah. report. All right, thank you so much. Uh, under unfinished business, then we do have the Corwin Press items in category 29. So Mr. Superintendent, are you then looking for final approval on those items? On items number uh, 29.1 through 29.11, those are the items that were pulled off of the last board meeting's agenda. So they appear here under unfinished business. And I believe Kenya Harrington um, explained the reduction, including the uh, explanations also in the Dear Board Member letter, which was sent out and is attached in the agenda. You so much. So then, do we have an a motion for approval of the items through twenty nine point eleven for the Corwin Press? Uh, so moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion from Mr. Alexander, a second by Ms. Petrick. Any comments, questions, or discussion on those items? Hearing and seeing none. Roll call, please. Mrs. Mansfield. Yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Dr. Akbar? Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Thank you. And item 29.1213. One, two, one, three, and one, four. Mr. Superintendent? 
Yeah, so um, item 29.12 is really the um, letter that explains the school calendar revision as we go to more of a, a phased in uh, approach um, starting on September 9th and ending through September 14th. I like to point out um, based on a question from Mrs. Mansfield, uh, pre-K starts on uh, September 14th as well. So it's pre-K, kindergarten, and grade one. And um, 29.13 is the resolution that actually captures those changes. And then under 29.14 is the um, our uh, proposed use for calamity days uh, if we need to use them uh, this year. <laughs> And so for formal approval, we need a motion on, res on uh, item number 29.13, which is resolution 2020-2021 uh, school calendar revision um, due to COVID-19 and district-wide remote instruction. So we're looking for a motion on that. So move. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Dr. Akbar and a second by Mr. Alexander. Any comments, questions, or discussion on the school calendar? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And now as we get to new business, uh, we are uh, considering the delay, uh, there's a resolution in front of the board to consider the delay of school athletic competitions and extracurricular activities at various sites uh, for the opening of the 2020-21 school year. And so I'm going to hand it over to the superintendent and then we'll open it up for discussion. Uh, if you'd let me know in the chat or uh, by hand, but of course chat is better. Uh, and I see people are already starting to line up. If you'd like to make comments, and email, let me know. And again, for the public that's watching and paying attention, uh, please know that we're, you know, we're approaching this very thoughtfully and very deliberately. There is no shortage of uh, people who have reached out on both sides of the of this issue, particularly as it uh, pertains to athletics, um, in person uh, and contact sports, no contact, low to medium and high contact sports. There's no shortage of folks that have that have reached out to us on both sides of this issue. We've seen as recently as today, uh, Saturday, this weekend with the MAC and, and today with, with the vote becoming public uh, for the Big Ten, uh, how collegiate sports is starting to look at athletics. So, uh, but we also know that our, our, our kids, uh, we hear you and our kids uh, deserve and need something, but we have to make a decision and we need to, to have a discussion about that. So thank you for joining us. Um, at this point, then, Mr. Superintendent, do you want to open up the conversation and then uh, in line right now, uh, after you're finished, um, we will hear uh, from our board. Yeah, so first I'd like to um, turn it over to Mr. Vassalotti and thank him and two teams of people, Matt, to discuss what they felt were guidelines for um, uh, restarting both contact sports and uh, non-contact sports. And so I'll turn it over to Mr. Basilotti at this time. Thank you, Dr. James, uh, members of the board. I appreciate the time tonight. Uh, it's obviously a, a popular and somewhat controversial issue. Um, left up to individual districts to decide about athletics uh, with no statewide initiative. So, uh, all along through the summer, through our workouts, which we've been allowed to, to conduct our phases one, two, and three, we've been consulting Summit County Public Health for guidance and protocols and, and gradually increased the intensity of our workouts based on those guidelines. Um, you know, our student athletes uh, benefit so much from athletics. And, uh, it's an education based uh, practice of athletics, and that's what the OHSA believes in. But um, the way things have been evolving through the summer, uh, there seems to be a lack of equity uh, with districts having to make individual decisions. So um, I was on a call with the Ohio 8 today, the ADs from the Ohio 8, and 
know, we were talking about that. And, uh, some districts are kind of the outside looking in as far as surrounding districts having sports, and theirs doesn't. Uh, the Cleveland Athletic Director shared with me they've lost 22 student athletes uh, to a private school up there just within the last week. So, um, you know, the benefits of, of extracurriculars in general, uh, not just athletics, but marching band and everything that goes along with extracurriculars, are life altering. The role models are our student athletes and other students receive from their extracurricular coaches and teachers are tremendous, the life lessons they learn. Uh, the latest from Summit County Public Health, uh, as far as recommending sports, uh, as you have seen, uh, involves a contrast of low risk versus high risk sports. So in terms of low risk, Summit County Public Health uh, has recommended they move forward as the OHSA guidance uh, has allowed. Uh, but with the high risk sports, which for us uh, would be soccer, football, and purely, Summit County Public Health recommends waiting until October 1st for competition. Uh, and allowing practice to that time, but not competing against other schools until October 1st. And as an example of how convoluted the issues become, uh, the OHSA actually is allowing, uh, through their guidance, contact sports, high-risk sports to begin as scheduled in late August. So um, kind of pit the county health departments versus what's coming from Columbus. And, uh, things get confusing, but I want to thank the board uh, for their thoughtful consideration of this issue. I know I've received a lot of calls and texts and emails from you know, not only our coaches, but parents and some of our student athletes as well. I was happy to share those with you uh, through Dr. James. Uh, so thank you. I'm certainly here to answer any questions anyone has and um, I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. And Superintendent, anything else before we would open it up for questions? Right. So the resolution that um, I prepared, which, of course, based on discussion can be changed, um, really dealt with, um, you know, with our remote start and then looking at uh, even as early as today, Summit County held a press, uh, Summit County Health held a press conference and released you know, another uh, letter, their preferred option, their lowest risk uh, they feel for disease spread, of course, is all schools start remotely. And then they offered a recommendation, their same one that Mr. Vassilotti referred to, was to delay the uh, fall contact sports until October 1st. Um, one thing I did discuss with senior staff uh, this morning and I'm uh, looking to get some additional information on is, uh, and not just for sports, but all of our extracurriculars. There are some issues with, um, you know, we need to consider bands, orchestras, and choirs. There's a lot of uh, information out there about uh, spread of COVID with those activities. Actually, the National Superintendents Association um, put out a graphic today listing some of those areas as high risk. Um, but I think we need to figure out, um, are there ways that we can even take some of our clubs and make them virtual? You know, could a chess club be virtual? So it's a lot more than just our sports. There's a lot of other activities that I think our kids enjoy. And I, you know, we need to figure out how we're going to be able to do um, all of those. But getting back to sports, so that's uh, the resolution would um, delay sports until uh, at least October 1st. Um, and then I think the question that I'm looking for some uh, uh, guidance from the board is whether you want to make a consideration for non-contact sports or even low risk, low contact sports versus contact sports. Thank you so much. Um, and as we get ready to open it up for questions, we have Ms. McKittrick, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Mansfield, Dr. Hall, uh, and Ms. Autry. And I'd like to start with just a quick question. Uh, and this is either for the superintendent or uh, Mr. Vassilotti. Uh, how should the board reconcile what we see as conflicting guidance from our public health agency and OHSAA, particularly in light of how we're starting to see even collegiate sports uh, begin to handle the athletic, the question of athletics? Um, 
And, and so if you could help us figure out how we're how how we should approach and reconcile sort of what seems to be at least conflicting guidance. And Mr. Vasilati, before you even answer, let me say first of all, if there's anyone that I wouldn't want to be right now after a board member or the superintendent or the treasurer. It is certainly your position. So thank you for everything that you do. And we know right now is a very difficult time. But as we start to formulate our questions and our thoughts and give you our feedback, how do we reconcile what seems to be conflicting information? This is a global health pandemic. And so the, the poll seems would seem to be, let's listen to our public health agencies, but we also have some other folks uh, that are saying, but we can do things safely. So how do we, how should we reconcile that? Thank you, Mr. Bravo. Um, so all along we've been listening to Summit County Public Health, and I'll certainly defer to Dr. James here um, for his thoughts, but uh, you know, I see um, high school sports, education-based athletics as different than college, especially the big time Division One college uh, athletics and certainly professional sports who are very much driven by finances. And certainly that's part of our equation, but not our primary driving force. And uh, the potential benefit for us of having some type of athletic program by following some kind of public health guidance is that uh, we have, um, for example, with football, the potential to play a city series schedule beginning October 1st and you know keep our teams within the city so they're not traveling very far uh, the only exception to that would be uh, for a playoff game which the ohs now has included the second week of october for all Ohio high school football teams don't have to qualify uh, so that would be the lone exception to traveling outside the city uh, if we're comfortable with our protocols our teams have been practicing them all summer uh, we've had a few positive tests of student athletes uh, those have been contained to one athlete per team uh, in four occasions and we follow protocols and in each case uh, it seems that it was contracted from the outside and not within the team itself so we haven't had a large outbreak um, as i said before uh, the benefits for our student athletes of athletics are tremendous the life lessons they learn and i know a lot of them are anxious to compete especially our seniors um, you know, so I would see, um, you know, speaking of what we're getting from, from our medical and scientific community, we've been following all summer. I have to thank them for providing us updates regularly from some of the public health. We're very cautious that way. And um, you know, we, we see what's going on in, the, in not only the state of Ohio, but the world around us with different activities being shut down uh, or delayed. And we certainly understand that. Um, we feel our, our teams and student athletes uh, could handle this. Um, our low risk sports are golf and tennis and cross country and volleyball, according to some of the county public health, have been practicing hard and in some cases competing for golf and tennis all day. And they'd love to continue that. And volleyball and cross country would start the third week of August with the competition. And they're very anxious to do that. Um, we certainly understand our, our high contact, high risk sport late until October first. Even if that's the case with soccer, football, and cheerleading, uh, to have an abbreviated season would certainly be uh, much more beneficial than our season fall. Uh, so again, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. At this time, uh, we'll open it up for comment. Ms. McKittrick is on line first. Thank you, President Bravo. Good evening, everyone. As always, I'd like to thank all those who contacted me on a variety of issues, including the remote learning plan, our start dates, and of course, athletics, extra and co-curricular activities. As with many of the decisions of late, the decision to begin, postpone, or cancel these activities is indeed a difficult one. As a retired teacher, I know very well that sports and extracurricular activities allow many students to excel. For those who struggle academically, these activities provide them an opportunity to shine. For some, they may in fact be pathways to careers. Again, though, I must consider not just the student athletes, but the coaches, spectators, personnel, and families of all those involved. 
because even though the student athletes may be young and healthy, the people living in their households may not be. For the same reasons I supported remote learning for the first nine weeks and the recommendations of Summit County Public Health, I support postponing athletics and extracurricular activities until then as well. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, I hope student athletes, parents, coaches, and all involved understand this to be a reasonable compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McKittrick, for those comments. Um, Mr. Alexander is next. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the parents, the coaches, and the community members uh, for their interest and their, their input the, for sports and athletics in Akron Public Schools. Uh, as we know, uh, sports is very important to a lot of people. Also, I want to thank Mr. Vasilite and his staff and his team for working hard because this is not an uh, uh, easy time for them um, at this point in time, trying to make the decision of what do we do for our young student athletes. Uh, but as an ex-athlete myself, you know, I understand how important sports is. Uh, it was very important to me. Uh, it, it carried me a, a long way. And I think that's uh, it's very important for our student athletes. You know, and I wish that the uh, uh, Ohio High School Athletic Association would have given us more concrete guidance uh, to, 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 to follow in order to help us make a, 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 a good decision uh, for our, athlete, our student athletes. You know, but but one one of the things, the, the two things that are very very important to me, um, is the safety and the health of all of our, our kids, uh, not just our, our students but our student athletes as well, and uh, it, it's it's important that we we make sure that they stay healthy. Uh, I'm willing to listen to anybody who has any other options that would be good for our students and and would be beneficial to help uh, move with athletics forward. Uh, but we also have to understand that, that we are professionals in one area, in different areas, but the medical people are the professionals in making these decisions right now for uh, the health and welfare of not just our student athletes, but the, the parents, uh, the households, and their community. Uh, so uh, I am going to base my uh, vote and my decision on the safety and the health of, of, of everyone. And so, uh, Mr. President, I... I I will wait until it's time to vote and make my vote, but I, I want the public to know that we do realize that sports is very important to play a role in, in the lives of a lot of students, uh, but we also have to think of the safety uh, of everyone. So uh, I want everyone to out there to remember the safety and the health of all our kids, because I would hate to have a kid who has the virus or not knowing they have, they have the virus to pass it to another kid and they pass it to someone else. And then we talked about uh, before the 2,300 kids that we have in the district who may have some type of respiratory problems, asthma and things of that nature, who could possibly get that and possibly have a tragedy. I don't want that to happen. So uh, I hope everyone re realizes and understand what we're trying to do is very important, not just for our student athletes, but for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alexander. Ms. Mansfield. So this has been another tough one. Lots of lost sleep for so many of us, um, Mr. Superintendent, Mr. Vassilotti. I appreciate all of your input. Um, I want to start out first and kind of chastise the Ohio School Athletic Association. I'm extremely disappointed with the um, with their ignoring their chances um, early on to even look at flipping seasons like other states have done surrounding us, for example, Pennsylvania, Virginia, I believe it's Illinois who's another one that has putting sports that are less contact, let, you know, um, that have been successful all summer at the forefront of our seasons. They could make that happen with one stroke of the pen where we would all be um, not having to face as many difficult situations as we're facing now with that. Um, for the last three weeks, the governor's office has said they're going to address sports. And for the last three weeks, that hasn't happened. Now, he does say he's going to talk about schools tomorrow. So heads up, we all just got an email from Rick Lewis um, telling us that they are going to talk more about schools tomorrow. Um, but we can only hope that they would make a decision that would impact all of our students and not just... Um, think about just the rural areas or just the suburban areas, the, the urban districts that have higher um, 
incidents and 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 uh and population need to be considered by these uh areas as well or let us go on our own and let us make plans with other districts um set us free from the restrictions that they have so that we can do that allowing private schools to cherry pick students during this time and allowing them to play for private schools you know i understand for the students so i i can't um you know, be angry at them for doing that, but putting us in a position where students are forced to make those choices and leave so that they can go and play somewhere else is just unconscionable from um, the Ohio School Athletic Association. Um, while we're at it, I want to make sure that we separate arts programming and as an extracurricular and arts programming as classes. We do have uh, classes that are academic and uh, part of the school day that are part of um, our college and career academies, for example, that are arts programming. So we want to make sure that we're not taking away I know it's not easy to do arts in this environment. I've got um, hundreds of friends who are out of work right now who work in the arts. So um, I understand that, but I wanna make sure we're separating the extracurricular of arts out from um, the academics of it. And there are ways even for that extracurricular piece to take place virtually. So I would encourage us to continue to look at those possibilities. Um, theater performances, musical performances are going on online. Um, and thank goodness, because what would uh, what would we do if we didn't have those things to watch? Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little long winded tonight because I had to write all this down. Um, I also want us to be continued to commit it, being committed to not painting any of our programs with one brush, with a broad brush, and looking at hard ways that maybe we can keep um, the training going that's been going on so that our coaches who've managed to do such a good job safely can continue to, their outreach and connection to our students, um, encouraging them academically and encouraging them um, with life skills. I know that uh, Mr. Alexander will tout his coaches and what a difference they made in his life. He's done that many times um, in our board meetings. And there's so many advantages to those connections. We just don't want to lose that. I wonder at the sports that we could all go out and do on any given day, right? We can go out for a run. We can maybe go knock a tennis ball around in the park. We can, um, I'm not a golfer, but people do <laughs> go golfing and have been doing throughout the pandemic. Even back in March, there were people, golf courses that remained open. Um, and, oh gosh, there was one. Oh, and um, swimming, um, a very individual sport you're in a lane, you can, you can distance that way. So those are just a few that we can, that I can point to that if we can find safe ways for them to at least train um, and, and possibly following the guidelines of our Summit County Public Health, find a way for them to um, do what you and I could go do in the park right now, um, if at all possible. I'm trying to make sure I covered all my scribbles here. Um, I think that's it for now, Mr. President. I, I appreciate the uh, long-windedness tonight, but it's I'm very passionate about these things, the um, the arts and and athletics, and these these are our carrots, right? These are our um, these are things we all remember from school. We we remember our academics fondly, sure, but um, we remember the time we spent with each other and with our colleagues outside of school as well. So whatever we can um, manage to do safely, I, I hope that we do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hall. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to just start by appreciating uh, the, the, the earlier conveyed sentiments of, of my board colleagues. I um, want to appreciate Dr. Mr. Vassalotti's also uh, his, his commentary as well. Um, I do have a, a couple of clarification questions to sort of open my, my I guess, my my part of this. Um, so in, in, in looking through the reading of the resolution um, from a language standpoint, um, I noticed that it says delay of athletic sporting events. Um, you know, are, are we, so so with this resolution, would we be allowing students to continue to practice 
uh, contact sports, for example, football, soccer, things like that, or or would we be, or would we be, or or does this, or, or would this resolution also uh, prevent that from happening as well? That's my first question. Uh, the way it's written, it would um, not allow that, but we could absolutely change that based on the board's desire to change that. I just put it together based on most of the, you know, health guidance out there that I've seen, um, including some of the items from Summit County Public Health. Gotcha. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, so, that, so thank you for that. Um, because, um, I, yeah, so that's why I asked the question because, you know, um, you know, to me, you know, sort of logically, um, you know, it would not, in my opinion, make sense to allow students to be practicing football, um, you know, for example, as well. I mean, so, you know, I mean, you know, the risks are what they are. So that's why I wanted to, I, so again, that's why I wanted to make sure that we were including practices when we set sporting events as well. So basically delaying the practices as well. Um, so, so thanks for that clarification. Um, I do think, so, you know, I, you know, and, you know, these, these, these are public board meetings and, 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 and open to discussion and common. And I do think it's important, um, you know, to, to tease out the nuance, because again, I, I wouldn't be doing my job as a community elected board member with the feedback I've already gotten from people. Um, if we don't at least have a conversation um, distinguishing contact from non-contact. Um, so, you know, so, so my position is very clear on contact, uh, but I do think we owe it to, to folks who may be tuned in and those who have emailed us about the non-contact part and to, to you, know, you know, sort of talk a bit about uh, why we're including non-contact solution as well. Um, so those are folks who are playing golf, uh, you know, we, we, you know, would be some tennis, you know, uh, and, uh, and granted, this isn't the, t you know, the season for those sports necessarily, um, tennis, for example, but, um, but again, I think it's important to sort of talk through that. Um, and, I, and I would love to kind of hear from Mr. Bastelotti or, 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 or my board colleagues, if, if they've got feedback um, on, on that nuance, you know, really explaining those who may be tuned in, you know, why we, you know, why we're um, considering uh, non-contact sports as a part of this resolution. And again, I've got more to say, but but I but I, I, I but I wanted to tease out the, the nuance between contact and non-contact and ensure that that there was a, a public conversation about about the non-contact piece. Thank you, Mr. Vassalotti or Mr. Superintendent. Uh, the question is, why are we including non-contact uh, or low contact sports in the resolution? I'll let Mr. Vassalotti talk about the plan that I think they wanted to allow uh, the non-contact sports to continue with safety guidelines. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jameson. Dr. Hall, that's an excellent question. And it, like a lot of uh, uh, issues during this time, it's been confusing because uh, right now, uh, according to Summit County Public Health uh, and the OHSA, the sports of golf, tennis, cross country, and volleyball, either low contact, which is the terminology that OHSA uses, or low risk, medium risk, which is some kind of public health lingo. Um, what has been confusing for us through the summer is that for much of the summer, cross country was labeled a high contact sport by the OHSA, and that just recently changed. Um, uh, to contrast that, Summit County Public Health considered volleyball for much of the summer to be uh, higher risk, and that changed. So at least now they're all on the same page. Uh, but we felt moving forward this fall, based on Summit County Public Health's latest guidelines, which is on our athletics update page now, was from August 5th last week. Uh, they do consider the low risk sports. Uh, and again, that would be golf, tennis, cross country, volleyball, and ball, to be able to move forward, not only practice, but have competition. Uh, so uh, that, that was part of our thought, part of our proposal, is that since we've been following the guidance of Summit County Public Health uh, throughout the summer, that we continue to do that now and propose allowing our low risk, uh, low contact support to those four to continue seasons as scheduled in their competitions as scheduled um, and along those same lines then we follow the guidance of some kind of public health to wait uh, for our contact sports until october 1st 
Now, I should say Summit County Public Health, since the topic of practice came up earlier, Summit County Public Health uh, is not banning practice for contact sports. Uh, and they're, they're saying practice within your team is okay, because you're, within the, you're with the same people every day at practice. You can have a scrimmage within your team, but they're just advising no competition with other schools via the scrimmage or regular season contest until October 1st. Uh, if the board sees fit to allow our contact sports to compete beginning October 1st with other schools, um, then we would certainly uh, need some preparation time for them to practice for soccer, football, cheerleading to practice, you know, prior to a, a regular season contest so that they're, they're physically ready to play. Uh, so I hope that clarifies uh, the low contact versus high contact, high risk. No, actually, it actually, you know, I, I, I'm, I think I'm more confused, um, which is why I want to ask the question. So, uh, you know, because and that's why, as I read through the resolution, I, I was a little unclear. Um, so, so basically, you know, uh, and, and please, again, I, I'm, I'm confused. So, we so we'll make sure that I have this right. Um, so, so the, the resolution that, that we're looking at in its current form. Um, are you saying that we're we're not including non-contact sports again? Because I'm looking at the wording, and you know, I, 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 I'm just a little confused. So, no, the, so we're, the resolution as it written, as it is written, is the default in in terms of where I'm looking is that the default position is banning, is not having anything, and then we have to go from you know until October first. So that was both uh, non-contact and contact sports. Now, um, there has, again, Mr. Vassilotti is right. There have been so many conflicting signals coming from what was low risk and no contact, and some of that changed. And I think based on what Summit County Public Health uh, put out today um, at their press conference, I think we're looking at that. Um, it's really about that fourth whereas in the resolution where we need to come to some uh, consensus on how we would like to move forward. I'll only say the issue of not having any of those uh, issues has to do with, you know, like, how do we get when we're competing going from one location to another, you know, we have to consider issues about transportation, um, because those are areas of, of typically high spread or we, you know, have to really uh, thin out the people who are on a bus or a van. The other one is, um, you know, based on some of the issues that were uh, brought up from the National Superintendent's Organization, you know, locker room areas. And see, there's a lot of other things about equipment, our facilities, making sure that, you know, we are keeping those clean. And it isn't like at the end of the day, it's constant every time there's a use of those facilities and uh, or equipment. And just to make sure that all those things are, are being addressed. And to be honest with you, that's for both uh, any sport where you're using equipment, you know, or items. So it's just making sure we can feel like we're doing, you know, the safest job possible. Um, regardless of whether it's uh, contact or non-contact. So that was the default position. Okay, so basically the way that, that, that to, okay, so thank you for that. So basically, so the way that this, is, so the way that, this is res, that this reads then is that we would basically uh, be, you know, banning all non-contact and contact sports as well as the practicing of contact sports until at least October 1st. Is, is that right. a fair submission? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, so um, I, I do know that obviously, you know, many of us, you know, talk to people in other districts and I, I know specific to cross country, our neighboring school districts just had an exposure with their cross country team at one of the high schools. Um, so, so now they've all been sort of sent back home, if you will, um, you know, um, Figuratively speaking, if you will, because of the exposure, uh, and, and that's and, and that's where and that's where you know I, I want to sort of begin my comment um, is that control sort of you know there's not just what happens within the practice environment, uh, but there's also you know you can't control um, what other families in you know uh, you know families of students are doing when they're not there you know as well as the sharing of equipment you know common shower areas bathrooms things like that. 
um, that I think make this a really, really difficult decision. Um, you know, I think, I think there was a comment, I think Ms. Mansfield sort of commented on this and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on it as well. And um, I'm also very disappointed in the OHSAA um, as well. And because, you know, the, the, what the conflicting guidance really suggests here uh, is, in, is, is, is that to a certain degree, um, we've politicized um, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a, as a state and as a nation, we, you know, we, we politicized, uh, COVID, um, you know, and, and, and I find that extremely disappointing because now is a time where, where we need sort of a, a, you know, where it'd be helpful to have common consensus around the science. I see the conflicting guidance just sort of really kind of suggests that this continued politicization of, uh, of a really sensitive topic. Um, you know, and some of the, we, you know, as we talk about low risk, um, you know, I, I just want to sort of reiterate, you know, that we're not talking about the regular flu. Um, and again, I, I don't want to talk, I, and I know I'm sounding like, like like I'm on a soapbox. I don't mean to sound that way, but we're not talking about the regular flu here. Um, you know, just today, there was another study that was released um, looking at, you know, they're talking about uh, myocarditis or heart inflammation um, that, uh, that it seems to be occurring at a much higher rate in folks that have COVID as opposed to the regular flu. Um, so almost every week, whether it's brain damage, whether it's permanent lung damage, whether it's heart damage, um, you know, these are all things that, you know, that, that is, uh, vascular conditions, strokes, um, these are all things that we're seeing in, in higher numbers than with the regular flu or with other um, diseases, you know. And so, you know, to those of you that have, you know, that, that reach out and you and, and sort of want to quote the you know, well, the lethality rates are really low. Well, lethality rate is one thing, but you know, congratulations, your child may survive, but 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 we put them at risk for for a, a plethora of other potentially life-altering um, you know you know you know conditions and whatnot. And so, uh, and and that's and I think that's what this organization, this board, is trying to avoid doing is we're trying to you know ensure that we're looking out not just you know pre preventing you know possible deaths, but we're also trying to you know, prevent potentially life-changing health circumstances for for for, for our students. Um, when you look at the CDC uh, guidance, you know, look at, you know, the three, you know, the three most common comorbid conditions, you know, as it relates to hospitalizations for COVID, it's, it's asthma is number one, obesity is number two, um, you know, so, uh, and we know that there are a high number of students, you know, that, that fall into those two, those, those two buckets, um, you know, and so that's where, you know, I, you know, I, I really want to come down on and say, it's our job to really kind of err on the side of caution. Uh, as you keep saying low risk, low risk of what? Uh, it's low risk of a lot of different items, you know, that are out here. So, um, so that's where, you know, I, I'm supportive of this resolution. That's why I wanted to ask the clarification questions to make sure I understood it as well. Um, because again, you know, and I think Mr. Vassalotti, I think you mentioned that the financial considerations, um, you know, of this, you know, with organized sports, college sports, um, you know, it, it, it's momentous, you know, uh, I think Ohio State stands to lose you know, over $150 million if the Buckeyes don't play in the fall. Um, I just saw a report today that Nebraska is looking at losing 80 to $120 million. And yet, and yet, if you're looking, if you're following the, you know, the current news feeds, um, they're very close to canceling um, or at least postponing these seasons until the spring. Um, you know, so, so and that's despite, you know, you know, much more in the way of money being brought to bear, still the health, you know, um, sort of outweighing the financial, you um, sort of rewards, if you will. And I echo Ms. Mansfield's comments. You know, I'm disappointed that that there wasn't an option on the table of postponing these sports to the spring um, because because that certainly could have been an option that was on the table as well. Uh, and perhaps and maybe OHSAA will will will, will eventually revisit that. Um, you know, but again, I, I, I at least wanted to make sure that that we sort of talked a little bit through, you know, the you know, the, the contact versus non-contact piece. Um, of this as well. So, so as, as so as this resolution is currently, um, you know, worded, um, you know, I, I'm in support of it. Um, but again, wanted to make sure that th those of you who are tuning in, you could, could hear sort of a talk about um, the non-contact versus contact part. And I would welcome any additional comments um, that anybody, any anyone would have on that on 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 that uh, delineation. Thank you, Dr. Hall, Mrs. Autry. Thank you. So many of my colleagues have already touched upon a lot of the things that I certainly agree with. And it is definitely a difficult uh, decision that we have to make this evening. So I, I just wanted to reiterate 
just based on the feedback that I've received, that this is not uh, a discussion about the importance of sports and extracurriculars. We all realize that. Um, so at the heart of it all is the health and safety of all involved, not only the children, the coaching team, the, the families. Um, and I'm going to put on my nursing hat, which I rarely do in this forum. Um, but there's just so many unknowns. And I know we keep using this word unprecedented, but there are so many unknowns. And there was a recent quote at a school board meeting in another part of the country that just really hit home to me. I just wanted to read it. And it stated that um, in the end, it'll be impossible to know if we overreacted or did too much, but it will be quite apparent if we underreact or do too little. So with that being said, you know, I am uh, in agreement with the resolution um, as it aligns to our vote two weeks ago. If we're gonna be educating remotely, um, we also uh, should consider the safety of our scholar athletes and those involved with extracurriculars in that same context. So um, I just wanted to share that. Um, one other thing, uh, I know a lot of seniors are concerned about how this affects potential scholarships and, uh, you know, you know, it, it's, it's a new day, it's a new time and colleges are going to also have to rethink um, this current climate, you know, this is not something they're going to be able to hold against everyone because this is affecting the entire country. So we have to kind of think outside the box moving forward as far as how that's going to work for us. But I would imagine colleges are going to have to have some type of grace uh, when it comes to this uh, upcoming graduating class of scholar athletes. That shouldn't be something that's held against them um, not being able to participate fully um, in sports this year. Um, and then also, I just wanted to share um, about thinking outside the box. You know, these coaches are, they play such an important role as mentors to our young people. Um, and then they have the love of the sport as well. Um, but it can be a little cumbersome, you know, following those processes uh, to make sure everyone is safe, you know, the different screenings and checks that they have to go through. Um, and it can take away a little bit, you know, from the enjoyment of the activity. So, you know, hoping that, we, you know, moving forward, if we continue with sports, that the coaches, the teams are supported in that so that they can have, a, I guess, a full enjoyment uh, without that piece. Because if anyone knows about how children are, you know, you're asking them the same 10 questions every day. There's, oh, yeah, no to all of them. So... I would, that's something you know that we need to think about, um, as well as some of the businesses in our church communities who have space. You know, when we're thinking about physical activity, it's very important to the health, you know, of all. So, you know, if for some reason we don't proceed, we have other places in our community. Um, we just park, passed a parks levy in May, so we need to be taking full advantage, you know, of our parks. Um, of other spaces that we might be able to carry out physical activity as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Autry. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Um, so, I, I just I echo everything that everyone else said. Um, just, uh, just so you know, uh, the MAC, which is uh, the um, sports league or conference that uh, both University of Akron and Kent State are in, has canceled its uh, seasons for the fall. Um, and so I think that if they're canceling it, um, just to uh, Ms. Autry's point, the they understand that they're going to have to recruit students differently um, in the next year with the hope that we, we will have some type of uh, vaccine and be able to move forward. So uh, I think just to my comments, um, the benefits of um, athletics is uh, tremendous. I think that we all understand that. Um, you know, I fully support our students participating in athletics and extracurricular activities um, 
such as the arts. Um, and I recall my days of running track and uh, playing tennis uh, on our tennis team in high school and being captain of the golf team and what it would have been like if I didn't have that final year. Um, and I know and understand that feeling that you could be having. Um, Cause I had took a step back after reading some of the students emails to me about um, what that might be like. Um, but I'm, so I, I know firsthand the benefits of sports and extracurricular activities and this decision um, and this time is not an ideal. None of this is ideal. I think that we all wish we were living in the ideal world and we wish we didn't have to make these type of decisions. We would love to be talking about other things um, and moving the district forward in other ways and other areas. However, um, none of us asked for this, and but we are here. And we have to understand that um, none of this is ideal or um, where we want it to be and what we would prefer to be doing. But uh, the Summit County Public Health uh, to just today uh, submitted the uh, their resolution and had a press conference and they specifically cited the uprise in teen uh, COVID exposures um, being a reason for their decision. Uh, that's the prime um, student population. That's the prime population that we're talking about, the ones that we're concerned about. And there's a rise right here in Summit County, which is an issue I believe that we should uh, be looking at seriously and taking seriously. Um, but I also want to say that the, this decision goes beyond just thinking about our students and the benefits that sports have on them. This decision affects our coaches. This decision affects their families. This uh, decision affects grandparents and parents and other community members uh, because anybody could have it, unfortunately, be asymptomatic, not knowingly passing it to other people. We have uh, far too many students in our own district who are immune uh, compromised, who have respiratory, comp uh, who are also respiratory compromised, and we need to be concerned about them as well. So as uh, Mr. Alexander said, health and safety is going to be the paramount um, portion um, of my decision making. Um, and I think that we have to be concerned about uh, conditioning as well. If we say that there's no sports, um, we also can't necessarily put conditioning on the table either. Um, I am willing uh, to have a conversation to what um, Dr. Hall stated about pulling out non-contact, low-risk sports and maybe having a separate conversation about that if there's enough will of the, the body to do so. However, I'm okay if, if that is not the will of this body, but I am willing to, to consider that specifically um, as that I'm greatly concerned about all of our students and how this might affect each and every one of them, but also our staff and our, our family members. Uh, I'm very greatly concerned about that. And just a note about uh, the arts that Ms. Mansfield mentioned, I, I think that for me, when you think about athletics, I, I look at athletics and I look at the band, I look at the gospel choirs um, or choirs. I look at all of those in very similar veins as far as risk for um, contracting the virus. And the last thing I want to do, as Ms. Autry mentioned, is underreact and then have uh, a situation where there's um, no no point of return. And that's that's not something that I would like to be a part of. And so I'm taking this uh, decision very seriously. And lastly, I thank everyone, probably close to 15 people um, and their, their young people who have contacted me. Um, I've read all your emails. I haven't been able to reach back to everyone, but I have read every one of them. I have talked to everyone who has called and I do hear everything that you say on both sides of this decision. So thank you.
Thank you so much, Dr. Akbar. Ms. Mansfield? So maybe um, I was so resolute with the with the school um, the the school going online that that decision as as hard as it was I just I felt so much more steadfast in that decision um, I've heard everything everyone says and I I totally agree with with everything and the superintendent and I had a thirty five minute conversation on Saturday because I just needed to hear. Um, you know, ways that we could make some things work. I'm, I'm wondering if anyone else has any suggestions on how we might work with those non-contact or low risk or what, whatever we're called, you know, someone, or it gets so confusing. Um, if, if we do have any room, wiggle room on that with, with any board members, um, they have been conditioning all summer really since I believe May, but I'm, I'm not really sure. It might have started in June um, at, at different levels. And again, that, and they've managed to do it as, as safely as possible. We, we've had that going on, you know, throughout the summer. We don't have a lot of non-dark nice months left. I can feel that weighing on my shoulders. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about kids being able to be outside and, and getting exercise and what that does for our mental health, right? Um, and again, to the Ohio School Athletic Association and the governor's office, should their guidance change for us, I would hope that this board would um, you know, quickly flip so we could flip sports or do whatever, if it was at all possible, um, especially with a postponement of things to the spring, um, if they would allow us some freedom with that and let us outside of the box that they're building that is not does not allow for equity across the state. I mean, it just doesn't. It, it's great if you live in a small county um, in the middle of the state, but it's not so great if you don't. And it shouldn't our students shouldn't be penalized for that. So I, I guess that's the part that's really weighing on me is um, that other students are going to get opportunities that ours aren't. And, and again, this is not putting health and safety aside at all. I'm just so frustrated that we're not being able to give them those opportunities where other schools are. I hate that part. So I'm struggling. So if anybody can help me, I'll listen. Thank you. And before anyone answers too, I guess I'll offer my uh, comments because I, I think I'm going to end in a similar place, uh, Ms. Mansfield, if that's okay. Um, I, I think like many of the folks that are around the room, so to speak, or are watching, I think we're all pretty exhausted uh, by COVID-19. Um, uh, these are not easy decisions that we're making. Uh, they're 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 very tough. And our responsibility as board members, um, at least what I believe our responsibility to be, and as even as parents and as coaches, is to make the right decisions, the best decisions that we can, and the ones that we feel are right for our kids. Um, I'm sure if we took a poll, all of our kids, because we'd probably answer the same way if it was a question as to what you would like to do. But what we'd like to do is keep things normal. What we'd like to do is go back and play sports. And we'd like to be in the marching band and uh, we'd like to be on stage. Uh, but our decision is really to think a little bit more broadly than that and to think about the 21,000 kids that we have. And again, as many of you have mentioned around the room, all of their family, their parents, their grandparents, their coaches, their teachers, the people they come in contact with in other places. Um, and so we have to think a little bit more broadly than that. And I think everyone here has said something about the importance of, of sports and extracurriculars. Um, and, and like many of my fellow board members, I played sports. If you're curious, I played soccer and I was a swimmer and diver. I wish I could say I was better at all three, but I didn't get any scholarship, so here I am. Um, but I, I, I loved sports and I was in theater and music all throughout uh, high school and I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, and I think we can all appreciate too that some kids would not have showed up at school. Some kids might not have graduated, but for sports and extracurricular activities, right? That is sometimes what grabs a kid and pulls a kid in and makes him want to do better uh, in academics because he's got that link. And so we all appreciate that and hear that. And I think some of the disappointment you're hearing about OHSAA and the state 
uh, state guidelines that have been put out is not so much that the guidelines haven't been put out, but if you read them carefully, they are conflicting. Uh, and they do send a mixed message to us about what we, uh, who we should be listening to and, and where our priorities lie. And, um, and it's difficult because again, seven of us are, in a, are, are on, a, on the hot seat um, to make a decision for a lot of people. And again, not just the 21,000 kids or whoever is participating, but everyone that they come in contact with. And that's a very difficult place to be. And uh, as many of you have said before, I appreciate all the people that have reached out. I appreciate that they're being respectful in their dialogue and, and they're being kind and patient with us. Um, but we've had a lack of consistent guidance and that you cannot escape. And our athletics too are not intra-district, right? They're inter-district for the most part. And, and as someone pointed out earlier, uh, we don't know how safe others are being, even if we feel we're being as safe as we can be. Um, and so we do have that to consider as well. I have to give some thanks to Summit County Public Health um, and to uh, Donna Skoda uh, for the guidelines that they've put out. I mean, they have been clear and consistent. Um, and they're, they've been at least the clearest and most consistent that we've received so far has been our own local guidelines and so much appreciation to them. Uh, this is still a global health pandemic. And, you know, personally, I prefer to defer to the to the public health professionals, as was mentioned earlier. And I agree that our colleges and universities, given what we've seen with the MAC and the Big Ten, they're going to get it right. They're going to understand that not all districts made decisions to play sports this year or they played them in a modified manner or they played them intra-district rather than inter-district or they did something. They flipped the season. Um, so this is an opportunity, I think, for us to think outside of the box, and it's a teachable moment, right? And we have to ask ourselves what we're also teaching our kids by the decisions that we make and what we're advocating for and what message we're sending to them about where our priorities are. Um, I would love for us to have another discussion about low or no contact sports like golf and things like that. So I think, Ms. Mansfield, to your point, I think it's worth a further discussion, but it's also an opportunity, again, not only a teachable moment, but an opportunity for us to, to think outside of the box. And we do have a lot of coaches and, and folks that I know would never walk away from these kids, regardless of whatever decision was made, that we would find ways to engage our kids and take advantage of opportunities that might exist outside of competitive sports, even if scrimmages or practices or conditioning were allowed or for low non-contact sports were allowed, there would still be opportunities for us to think outside the box, even in music and arts. I was talking to someone today who mentioned that they, you know, wanted to be able to do scripted uh, script readings with their with their students online. Brilliant idea. I've seen online, and many of you probably have uh, through social media, concerts and acapella groups recording different pieces and putting them together and and coming out with something really beautiful. And so there are a lot of ways that our kids can still participate, I think, uh, in extracurricular activities. Chess club, is, as the superintendent mentioned, could be online. Uh, National Honor Society can be online. There are lots of things that we can do online. Is it ideal, as someone pointed out? Absolutely not. It's None of this is ideal. Um, but there are opportunities for us to think outside the box a little bit be leaders and use this as a teachable moment for our kids and maybe even for ourselves a little bit. Uh, but again, I, I kind of find myself in the same place that one or two board members uh, have mentioned um, that that I'm I'm open to a conversation about low or no contact sports. I still need to learn a little bit more uh, on how those are defined um, and and make sure that that we're following. Uh, proper guidelines. I, I'm a little concerned still about the lack of sufficiently available testing um, for our students and our staff and anyone they come in contact with. Um, but again, uh, you know, these opinions are mine. And so I appreciate, you know, even the comments that are rolling in online. I hope they again continue to, to be respectful and polite because I think we're being respectful and polite. Um, so we appreciate uh, the folks that are that are weighing in on this. Um, with that, I, I, there is a, a there is a resolution in front of us, but I, there also seems to be a question from at least three or so board members uh, that may be interested in, in talking a little bit more about lower no contact. 
the resolution can either come up for a vote as is, it can be modified and voted on, uh, or it can be tabled for uh, a second discussion. I'd like to open it up at this point. Uh, Dr. Hall, I know you had a comment, um, and, and if, if you can make a quick comment, then maybe we can check in with the board as a whole and see where we are uh, in terms of the resolution as it stands. Yeah, thanks, Mr. President. Um, you know, um, my I guess my comments were really in regard to the non-contact component. So, so I'm, I'm happy to. So, if, so if you want to move to that part of the discussion now, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, you know, with regard to uh, OHSAA, um, and, you know, I'm in agreement that we should, you know, continue to pay attention to what they're doing. Um, however. Um, you know, if you know what they're doing has to make sense too, right? I mean, so if they were to say tomorrow, hey, you know, we decided that football is safe and it's fine. Like that wouldn't change my mind about about football. Um, you know, so my my grandfather used to say you can't make sense out of nonsense. And so as long as they're not talking nonsense, uh, happy to happy to engage and and kind of discuss uh, some of their um, you know their guidance. But so much of it thus far has been conflicting and it feels very politicized to me. Um, you know. And then I'll, I'll save the rest of my con and then as it relates to the non-contact, let me just say quickly that, um, you know, I am happy um, to have a conversation about that. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm also I, I'm also content with the resolution as it, as it stands today. But again, happy to have a conversation about it. Um, I think I was a bit more on the fence um, as contact sports uh, until very recently. In fact, um, yeah, I know that, that we've been notified of some um you know some 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 COVID exposures and i know that in some of the district other districts as well um that i've reached out to they've had you know specifically their cross-country teams um have had some exposures and they've had to suspend uh activity for 14 days because of those exposures and, that, and that's cross-country and let me just i have you know there, there are four cross-country runners who live on who live on who, who are my neighbors they're, they're you know and i see how, how hard these kids are working they're out, it's 93 degrees, they're outside running in it. Um, you know, they're up early, they're out there in the afternoon. So my gosh, you know, um, we definitely see, I see it personally, you know, how hard these kids are working, um, you know, which is why it's hard for me to say, you know, that I, I still just have the reservations I do even about non-contact because again, you know, even in other school districts that are more rural, they're having um, issues with, with, with specifically cross country. Um, and so I'm just wary of, of, you know, in my mind, I think it's just a matter of time um, before we have those same issues here. And I just, I really, you know, to, to Mr. Alexander's earlier point, you know, our, our true north here has to be the health and safety of these students. But again, happy, happy you know, to be flexible in my thinking and, and to have a conversation, you know, have additional conversations as it relates to non-contact sports. But I think I'll be rather hard to convince to go the other way. But again, happy to have that conversation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. So as we talk about the resolution or look at the resolution, I think you'll notice too in the uh, now therefore section, uh, there still is some ambiguity in that it says any and all. And so I'd like to just open it up to the board for their thoughts on, especially for those of you who suggested uh, uh, maybe that we, you know, allow some flexibility or if there is some flexibility or discretion or the way it's written there necessarily is some. So how how is that discretion going to be applied and, and to what? And I've noticed, um, I've noticed uh, and have received some feedback too that, you know, Summit County Public Health and their guidelines, if, if we're following Summit County Public Health, the, the feelings or, or the, the consensus seems to be that Summit County Public Health would allow conditioning and practices. Uh, Mr. Superintendent or Mr. Vasilotti, can either of you confirm whether Summit County Public Health would allow uh, intra-district practices, conditioning, scrimmages uh, outside of competitions? Go ahead, Mr. Vassalotti. Yes, thank you, Dr. James. Uh, Patrick, the current guidelines from Summit County Public Health uh, this was as of last Wednesday, August 5th, uh, and they're the latest we've received, uh, do allow what they call low risk, which is low contact to the OHSA, those sports to not only practice now, but compete. 
and then they do allow practice for the contact sports now but they do not allow competition or don't recommend competition i should say for contact sports until october 1st so that was the latest we received from summit county public health uh, regarding the low contact versus high contact thank you so much appreciate You're it welcome. dr akbar and then i think uh yeah dr akbar go ahead Yeah, so, um, I mean, as far as low to no contact sports, I'm definitely willing to have that conversation. Um, you know, one of my other concerns is if we do allow some sports is uh, I'm concerned about also the limit of spectators um, and that being another added risk that we would need to consider. Um, you know, there has been uh, some conversation that was forwarded to me about, um, you know, volleyball specifically and how there's already been practices with sport with the spectators and, you know, that being the concern or uh, how that should be used as a way, a reason behind us moving forward. And I'm not necessarily sure if I agree with that. Um, I think this is just is a weighty thing, and I, I'm willing to have the conversation around um, golf, tennis, and, you know, even volleyball, perhaps uh, some of these low to no contact sports. But I think that also means we would have to make a decision that we uh, limit or exclude spectators for those sports uh, to further limit the uh, risk. Uh, so I think that that's another piece of the conversation we need to talk about. Um, conditioning is another one. Uh, and how do we ensure that the uh, cleaning of those facilities are happening um, much more frequently? I know Dr. James talked about that this morning when we were in our meeting um, and saying that was a concern of his. and. So partially because that's a concern of his, um, it's a concern of mine as well. Um, I would say it was a concern anyway, but it's an added concern if, you know, there some type of um, highlight that they're, they're, we may not be able to do it as well as we, we, we need to. So that is, those are just things that I think that we need to add to this conversation. If we're going to put that on the table, we need to also at those pieces um, on top of transportation. That's another uh, thing that Dr. James mentioned. Um, you know, how are we transporting our student athletes to and from different um, sporting events and competitions and the risk that having them engaging on the bus, um, what does that, you know, how does that add uh, to the, the concern? So, I don't know if we want to continue to have that conversation, but if we do, those, I would say we need to also include those things as well. Those are good points. Thank you, uh, Ms. Autry and then Ms. Mansfield. Yes, thank you. So it's somewhat related to what Dr. Akbar just stated. Um, although I am in support of the uh, resolution as it stands, um, I'm open to further discussions about the uh, low risk, non-contact sports. But if we're going to do that, in all fairness, what should also be on the table is allowing continued practices and conditioning for the other sports as well, in all fairness. Um, and again, putting on that nurse's hat of mine, um, I just want folks to understand that it just takes one person and then that can create a, a domino effect of quarantine and a 14 days, which is half a month. So it can lead to a snowball effect. And, you know, we need to make sure that we have something in place, you know, should that happen? Cause that would cancel a lot of season anyway, with just a few individuals affected. So just keeping that in mind. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Mansfield. Such a great point, Diana. And I think that that's something that some of the parents who are thinking it's a good idea to have their students hop to another school to 
participate in a sport should think about because chances are pretty darn good that either school or um, sports at those facilities could easily get shut down by you know, one person getting sick and that could easily happen. So, um, you know, I, I really appreciate that I have all of you to talk about this with because listening to all your points of view really does um, have an impact on my thinking and I, I really appreciate it. I do agree. Um, Dr. Akbar brought up some excellent points. Um, I, I think a lot of those guidelines are already in in place, but I, I think that we should look at those. And I agree with Diana. I think that um, the point I was going to make is that if we've done conditioning all summer safely, can we try to keep doing that? Um, it's it's that and, and, the, and the low contact or moderate risk, whatever we're calling it in this I just think following those um, Summit County Public Health guidelines, if that's what we're basing so much of our decisions on, right, we're basing them not on our just our gut, but we're basing things on science. And the science in Summit County is telling us that this can't happen, but this can. So I, I'm, I'm trying to, to weigh that with my cautionary side, which is, you know, protect, protect, protect. So um, I, I appreciate this discussion. Patrick, you're on mute. Yeah, I'm like, I can't hear anything. Oh, I, yeah, I was talking. Maybe it's your computer. <laughs> you're not me. Um, yeah, I, I agree, uh, Ms. Mansfield, and I think that's where I was getting with some of my comments. We're pointing to Summit County Public Health. We're talking about those guidelines that they've issued, um, you know, especially with the delayed uh, sports. But that's why I was asking the clarifying questions around practices and scrimmages and conditioning. Uh, but Diana brings up some good points about um, uh, about all of that. And, and I think, you know, we're talking about the possibility of another discussion, but we're also having an extended one here. Um, so when we get to the resolution, we will need to figure out uh, what that means, because there is still some some built in ambiguity in, in that resolution. And as Ms. Mansfield pointed out, you know, the state has said for three weeks in a row, it's going to come out with some guidance or some announcements on sports and there doesn't every week sort of gets kicked to the next one. We've been told this week uh, and everything we decide today, today may change. Uh, and, and that's necessarily why there is some ambiguity in that resolution. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, Mr. Alexander, you had a, a question as well. Yeah, my question is, uh, I know we have the, the resolution on the table right now uh, that we're going to possibly be voting on. Comment. My question is, can we vote on that today? I know we have a retreat coming this Friday. Is this something that we could possibly bring to the table uh, to discuss at the retreat and then maybe come back and vote again if we want to make some amendments or uh, adjustments to the resolution? I think that would be uh, possible. Uh, I can ask Mr. Pendleton to weigh in because he'll be at the retreat as well. And that is, a, I mean, the retreat is a board meeting. Yeah, the board can post topics. I think um, the president, vice president, we're going to determine the topics and get back to the board as long as we properly notice those and uh, notice of the intent to take action or not. We certainly can do that at a retreat. Yeah, or, or we don't want to vote on it now. If we can do, if we can vote on it to retreat since it's going to be an open meeting. We have the discussion there. We bring more information to us at that time with the, with the low risk and the high risk and what the. Public, the, the professionals and the medical professionals are saying as far as uh, uh, Summit County and then kind of make uh, vote at that point in time if we need to, unless we need to vote right now. It's up to everyone. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just had a, a quick comment. You know, I think Ms. Autry makes some really good points and um, what I feel us doing um, is it, it feels like we're edging closer and closer towards a very slippery slope here, um, you know, and so I think, you know, where a lot of our heads were at early on is, you know, that the health and safety of our students is our true north and, and, and that's what we're going to stick to. Um, and yet I, I sense us sliding towards a slippery slope 
um, you know, in regards to making exceptions for, uh, you know, for other activities. Um, and I'm just, I'm very concerned about, um, about this. Um, I really am. And so again, um, I don't know if this means that we table this resolution until Friday. Um, you know, I'm, again, I, I think I've been very clear. I'm, ha I'm, I'm, I, I, I would, you know, in, in the way that, it, that this resolution has been explained, um, I would vote yes on it tonight. Um, you know, but, but if, but if the, but if the body at large would rather wait until Friday, uh, and discuss further, I, I, I can get behind that too. But I, I, I just do, I just want to say for the record that I, I feel like we're starting to edge towards a, a very slippery slope. Thank you. And, and I'm ready to vote on this as well, but it, as you say, it, all that we start, start we're going backwards, slippery slope. Uh, if we're going to vote, we need to go ahead and vote tonight and get it, get it over with if that's the case. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, I think we, we're talking about the safety and, and the health of health of, of our kids and their, 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 their parents and the coaches and everyone else. And uh, if we're going to vote, let's go ahead and vote. So can we call the question? Uh, Miss, uh, if we can, too, uh, Miss McKittrick and Miss Mansfield also had comments lined up. Miss McKittrick, we have a thank you, Mr. Bravo. Uh, just a couple of things. Recently, Ohio was number twelfth in the nation for twelfth in the nation for COVID positive children. That's children aged zero to eighteen. Uh, second, I think we're, we're sending a lot of mixed messages. Either we say that our, again, to borrow Dr. Hall's phrase, our true north is the safety of our children. Once we start nuancing that, then we say that we're compromising their health and safety. Either, I don't know how we can say that a practice or a scrimmage is safe but a competition is unsafe when essentially they're doing the same thing. It just depends on whether or not they're scrimmaging against their own team members or another team. So the mixed message is, I think, then we can transfer to academics. So we're going to say some in-person activities are okay, but we're keeping kids out of school for at least nine weeks because that's unsafe. So the safety versus unsafe is a message I'm unwilling to compromise on. And I will always err on the side of caution for the safe, the health and well-being and safety of not just the students, but again, everyone that those kids come in contact with. And we've seen already that one student in what's considered a lower non-contact sport was also in what's considered a high contact sport and tested positive for COVID. And so both those teams had to put protocols in place and suspend activity until the quarantine period was over. And so I think if we start seeing that kind of crossover, then again, we have to go back to our primary responsibility of keeping children safe. And so if we call the question, I'm ready to vote to support the resolution as written. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, do you, would you guys allow Ms. Mansfield or, and Dr. Akbar has one final comment as well. Ms. Mansfield. So I think that if we go ahead and vote tonight, that would be fine. And then if it's the board's will that we come back and possibly, um, you know, if there's any further information that we can get regarding um, the guidance of, again, the health professionals. I'm not a health professional. I bow to Diana's expertise, the expertise that Derek has, and I'm looking at the guidance from Summit County Public Health. I don't want to make this decision by myself. I'm unqualified to make a complete decision by myself. That's why we have this guidance, right? And their guidance is slightly different than this resolution. Now we can err on the side of caution and I don't have a problem with that. So I think that we could go ahead and vote, but I don't think there's anything wrong with then getting a little more information and we can always amend from there. That would be my thought. Dr. Akbar. 
Yes, yeah, so I um, basically agree with uh, what Ms. Mansfield said. Um, I would like to have further discussion about no contact sports or low contact sports. Um, if there's enough on the board who's willing to have that conversation. Um, I, I do agree that our primary advisor um, should be Summit County uh, Public Health. I, I'm not as concerned with um, other entities who may have, you know, financial uh, gains to make uh, to for why they would make certain decisions or not. Uh, um, you know, I'm, that, those aren't aren't really the advisors that I want to follow um, because our children deserve us to make uh, science related decisions. Um, and I think that uh, one one note to that is that the science related decisions and the, the advice or guidance provided by Southern County Public Health is I think the minimum, you can always go above that. And I think that that's where we, where we should be going. And so what we have on the table today is a resolution that goes above that guidance. Um, we should not be upset that uh, the superintendent and uh, the administration have provided us a recommendation above the guidance. Uh, it does not go against the guidance. It takes that guidance in consideration. And also, um, I just want to point out that we haven't said this enough. Um, and I know Dr. Uh, James and I have talked about this. Is we, you know, when we think about Summit County totally, um, Akron is probably the most vulnerable out of all of the municipalities in in our county, especially around you know the social determinants of health and poor health outcomes. And so if you consider all of that, I I am still willing to have the conversation about low contact no, no contact support, but I do want to commend the administration for taking that into consideration with this resolution. Yes, thank you. And I guess um, just my final comment then is uh, I, I agree, and I, I would like to have further conversations. Um, as many of you, or a couple of you, especially, have pointed out, um, you know, we're pointing to Summit County Public Health. I'm not the health expert. I, you know, if, if we're going to follow Summit County Public Health, I almost wish the resolution would was a resolution to follow Summit County Public Health guidelines and and, and work from there. Um, but I also, to Dr. Akbar's point, I mean, I highly commend uh, this district, its administration, the superintendent, uh, Mr. Vassilotti, for all the work uh, that's gone into this and working with our coaches and our athletic staff across the district, because uh, this hasn't been easy, I'm sure. And again, I, I, you know, just echo what I said before, outside of maybe the folks that are on this call, the person that I would want to be least right now is Mr. Vassilotti and, and the superintendent. But um, so I commend them for going above and beyond what Summit County Public Health guidelines have put into place. But um, and, and there's no, uh, I have no issues with being safer uh, before I'm sorry. But I do feel like with the resolution as written, I still have some questions. I'm still, I still would like to get more. Um, it's going to come down to the roll call for me, I think. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that I, I, I don't. Uh, that I that I care too much about the health and safety, or I don't care enough. It just means I, I think I'd like to have some more conversation. Um, but but that's just where I stand. So I believe we have had a chance, uh, Mr. Alexander. I, I was going to uh, make a motion that we accept the resolution as is, and uh, that's it. Thank you. We have a motion on the resolution. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Uh, roll call, please. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? No. Dr. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Mansfield? No. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that discussion. I, I really appreciate everybody's input and thoughts and to everyone again that reached out to us 
Thank you so much. I think if you uh, keep an eye on us, we'll have some continued conversations. It sounds like at least uh, this board is, is, is open to further discussion as we move forward. All right, with that then, we do have a need to recess into executive session. And so pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22 G4 to review negotiations or bargaining sessions with employees concerning compensation and other terms and conditions of employment, we are looking for a motion. I believe I had one from Dr. Akbar. Do we have a second? Second. We do have a second. Any final comments, questions, or discussion before we recess into executive session? If not, we do have a couple of items that uh, following executive session, we will return to regular session to vote on a couple of items. So um, whenever, when we're finished voting, if you could all please make sure to exit out of this meeting before we join executive session. Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Dr. Hall? Yes. Yes. This is Mansfield. Yes. This is McKittrick. Yes. Dr. Akbar. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And for those who joined us uh, to watch on our live stream and, and may not be joining us after executive session, thank you for participating. Have a good evening and we'll see the rest of you in executive session.
Thank you. Good evening and welcome back to the regular meeting for the Akron Public Schools Board of Education for Monday, August 10th, 2020. We do have two items left uh, for consideration. Uh, the first, which and we'll take them in order. The first is a tentative agreement between the Akron Board of Education and the Service Employees International Union Local One Employees. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Mansfield, a second by Mr. Alexander. Any comments, questions, or discussion on this agreement or this, or this resolution? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. yes. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And our second item for approval is the MOU SEIU Local 1 uh, MOT for the 2020-2021 bus route pick. Um, do we have a motion? No move. Second. Thank you, Ms. McKittrick and uh, Dr. Akbar. Any comments, questions, or discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. McKittrick? Yes. Dr. Akbar? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Autry? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Thank you. Uh, before we adjourn, uh, would the board permit me to ask a clarifying question on the resolution that we uh, passed tonight? If the superintendent could just clarify, and I already have received some questions, unless and until the board passes anything else, the resolution that we passed tonight formally delays all sports and extracurricular activities further notice including conferences, scrimmages, conditioning, 
for all sports, regardless of, of their contact level. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other business to come before this board? Well, thank you again, everyone, for a brilliant conversation. I appreciate uh, the dialogue and have a good evening. And I will take a motion to adjourn this meeting. So move. So move. Thank you. Uh, we, we are here. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank good night. Night. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night.